And if you notice, I am really glad I'm making this video because I potentially just saved Billy a costly repair. Hey, hey, hey. Today we're gonna go over some walk behind mower maintenance and just general information about the mower to get you more familiar with these machines. Where better to start off than the operator controls? So, you know, this is obviously very basic, so if you don't need this stuff, feel free to skip ahead. But let's start right here. This is the choke. So when you start a small engine like this uh, cold, you're gonna need to pull this choke. So as you get going throughout the day, stop to stop. If, you're, if you don't have a lot of drive time in between stops, you probably don't need to choke it anymore, and you'll just kind of listen to your engine and figure that out as you go. Uh, we got the hour meter right here. We're showing a little over 100. It's a new mower midway through the season. Uh, so we have our throttle with the old turtle and rabbit to let you know, throttle up, throttle down. Um, just a little FYI, when you start the mower, it's best to start it in uh, the middle. And when you shut it off, shut it off in the middle. You don't really want your engine going to full RPMs right off the bat or shutting it off with it at full RPM. So just throttle that down. Uh, you typically don't want your blades on with the throttle down, although I know you can do that. You know, some guys do that to limit how far the grass is shooting out the deck and stuff like that. I get it. Um, I always like to have my mower on full throttle when I had the blades engaged so it had all the power that it needed. Uh, right here we have the key. So we're off. Uh, this is eye is on. And over here is where you would turn the key to start the machine. Uh, we have safeties right here. So if, uh, if you're trying to put it in gear or engage the blades and the safeties are not engaged, then it's not gonna, it's not gonna work. It's gonna cut off. Um, I, I highly recommend not tampering with your safeties. They're, they're there for safety. So leave them how they are. On this particular mower, to put it in gear, you simply push forward on this. Um, you need to have this down. So the common way I would do it is just with my thumb, push it up or even just push my belly into it like that if need be depending on the situation and stuff like that we have an emergency brake right here uh, you're probably going to have some kind of a sulky obviously this is billy's and we're running pro slide so we got the pro slide on here if you're still running a wheeled sulky i highly recommend to look into uh, the pro slide because it's just a far better design um, it's way way more modern design than the wheeled ones and just makes a lot more sense uh, but Nove does not market it very well so that's the only reason I can think why people don't have them on this mower we actually have uh, foot brakes so you can press either foot down on either side here and stop your mower so this is an awesome uh, safety feature built into snappers and I, I don't really know why there, this isn't on more mowers. At the end of the day, it's not that big of a deal. Uh, in here, down here under the controls right here, we have some different types of adjustments you can make as far as the mower tracking left, tracking right, if it's veering on you on this mower, this would be the, the apparatus to tinker with right here and get that set to where when you don't have either handle pulled back or forth or anything, your mower's just going perfectly straight like it should. Uh, so that's what that is. Um, let's take a look what else we got. So we got some grease points going on here. So this is something you're going to want to get familiar with on your mower. Here's one right here. There's obviously going to be one right there on the other side because these are the handles that are on both sides. So that's kind of typical that when, when you find a grease fitting on one side, you can almost expect to find it on the other side. Um, look, look for pulleys. Pulleys have a lot of grease fittings uh, most of the time. Um, under the deck, under the, the mower where the engine's sitting, you'll more than likely find a grease fitting or two there. Check your wheels, sometimes the wheels, especially caster wheels. So, um, and, and sometimes these do too. I've, I've had mowers that we've had to grease these. Uh, these caster wheels here, if you notice, it's not a typical grease fitting. So these do not need to be greased nearly as much as the, the typical grease fitting grease fittings. Uh, but this one right here is, is where you would uh, put, your, put your grease in, into this. 
Uh, so this is typically a, a yearly maintenance thing right here. Um, down here, these are called scalp wheels. So the point of the scalp wheel is when you're going over uneven ground and stuff like that, potentially these wheels can hit the ground and keep your mower deck up and keep you from scalping, hence scalp wheel. Um, this is something that we do to all of our mowers and I highly recommend that you consider this. I see so many guys still going around with the rubber flaps or whatever that come stock on their mower and they have no ability to actually keep the grass under their deck. And then I see the other gamut of the guys that, that realize they want to keep their grass under their deck and then they go spend a couple hundred bucks on something. When we made this, I, I have a video, I'll link it up above um, on making this. So I think total roughly 20 to 30 bucks depending on you know what metal you go with and stuff like that but this is a very short fabrication process with very few tools needed and we rigged it up with a little cheapy harbor freight strap boom uh, we can lift this drop it and as you see this is months and months later after we built this and it is like in perfect condition i cannot believe that it is in this good condition because uh, when I had all the employees in my business, these things would just get destroyed all the time. And that is another reason why I just wanted to fabricate them instead of buying a $200 grass flap because the employees don't, don't care for the equipment like the owner does and they tend to get destroyed very quickly. Uh, right here, you'll notice on the four corners of the deck, there's one back there too, right there. So this is where you can raise and lower your deck. You're going to want to note and just remember forever how many holes showing equals what cut height so it's very important when you get into people that are uh, you know educated when you get into educated customers and they want their grass cut at you know say four inches um, is like a very healthy height to cut turf type tall fescue which is the prominent grass in northern Kentucky um, four inches I mean we had some people wanted at four and a half inches and the difference that that half inch or inch makes on the grass blade what it does is it keeps so much more shade to the soil so it's the moisture in the soil is evaporating at such a slower rate that your grass is gonna stay greener and healthier and be able to deal with drought and disease and everything else so much better so around here like people really want to cut at three inches is like what you know most people that I would say don't care about their lawn they want their lawn cut at three inches because they think well if I cut it down real short then uh, you know they won't have to come back and cut it nearly as soon and the fact of the matter is it doesn't matter what height you cut your grass the grass is gonna look like it needs cut when it's uneven again so that doesn't make any sense to me but it's hard to explain to um, you know homeowners who just really don't care that much about the lawn and they just want it cut and don't want to have to do it themselves and stuff like that. Um, I'm going to pop some stuff off here and get in here. But uh, before we do that, uh, so we have some, some belts and pulleys down here that we'll take a look at in a second. Air filter in here, we'll pop this off and take a look at it. Here's the oil filter. So this is a pretty standard oil filter location on a mower. Just you know, when you have your, your engine like this, a, a big engine uh, sitting on top of the deck and stuff like this, you're gonna find your oil filter on the side of your engine most of the time. There's where you fill it up. It's got the dipstick to tell you if you're at the right uh, level or not. Uh, we got a spark plug on each side. Uh, we have different cables and throttles and stuff like that. Um, here's the hydro reservoir. And if you notice, I am really glad I'm making this video because I potentially just saved Billy a costly repair because this is obviously leaking. So this is a reason why you want to just kind of check your equipment every now and then. I recommend to blow off your equipment after each use. It really takes two seconds. Get all those grass clippings out. A lot of times they have moisture in them. We'll start to premature rust and stuff like this. So that's that. Um, note this real quick so if for some reason your mower won't start and stuff like that on this mower you can lock these back there's another one on the other side and lock this pin back into that little groove right there and you will be able to roll the mower freely without the engine on and using the transmission and stuff like that um, fuel filter 
fuel filters are super cheap guys I would highly recommend to um, replace those more often than not we have the battery under this compartment I really like how snapper pro uh, protects the battery in this case like this a really simple bungee cord with a um, little locking design thing here so just really simple uh, holds that in place there and I really like that keep all the grass and moisture and stuff off of that um, so that's kind of uh, the very basic gist of it obviously your fuel goes in here uh, one thing I want to note about the fuel cap here is this one actually doesn't have it but we used to run X mark turf tracers and there is a pin size hole in the top of this lid and over time it would just get gunked up and then airflow couldn't go through and what was happening is it was creating a vacuum inside of the gas tank reservoir and when you engage the blades you pull the yellow knob up engage the blades well the the vacuum was keeping enough fuel from getting to the engine and it was causing the mower to cut out so uh, uh, this happened to me on a very big property and it was kind of out of the way and stuff i was nowhere near any kind of dealer or anything to go for assistance and um finally figured that out i forget how i figured it out but i grabbed a paper clip which i just happened to have in the truck thankfully and ran it through that a couple times and then boom mower was back to working like normal uh one thing real quick i want to say about this is obviously a snapper pro it's a 48 inch it's sw25 is this model right here uh, but if if you're stuck on brands i i highly recommend get off the brand wagon because at this day and age um, basically anybody who's in the business of manufacturing these commercial mowers is putting out a pretty quality machine and if you take care of it it's going to be fine to see so many guys buying x marks and stuff like this that it's just like man you're paying two three four five thousand dollars more per piece of equipment that would do the same exact thing and honestly from switching from laser z's and turf tracers to these snappers the sw25 and that's the s200 xt uh, is what we run that's a 61 inch um i i honestly prefer the snappers over x marks so like at, at first we had a couple issues we spaced out these wheels uh, I have a video where I space out the wheel on this exact mower right here um, but yeah let me pop some stuff off and we'll come back and take a look at the the stuff that's hidden right now all right I got the battery compartment propped open here have the air filter which look at that um, and then I also have undone these because I just wanted to show you how quick and easy it is to access this on a snapper and this is pretty standard uh, you know quick and easy to access under here on any mower that has a decent design so there's that I'm gonna set this over here so it doesn't get all scratched up start rusting on us so um, see right here we have another grease fitting we have a grease fitting on this side so like I said you know check both sides and then I'll be willing to bet there's some in here I'm honestly not super familiar with this mower as I'm not using them every day anymore uh, at one point I was very familiar with this mower and there's another one right there so they get dirty and they get hidden so you really need to look for them uh, if you look in your your manual that comes with your mower it should very clearly lay out where every single one of them is and tell you the intervals and stuff like that that is another thing like the, the maintenance schedule is laid out by the manufacturer for you so honestly all you have to do is to put that onto a calendar and then make sure that stuff gets done so uh, right here if you see this this is going to be where you can get leverage on this if you need to replace your deck belt um, if your belts start to fray and crack and stuff like that uh, I don't know if I would say go ahead and replace it if it's really bad definitely go ahead and replace it but once you get a belt to a, a point where it's looking like kind of iffy I would have one in the truck ready to go because you can just replace that on the fly and save yourself a lot of man hours if you just have it ready to go and if you order it off the internet like from igoprolawnsupply.com then you'll save a lot of money from running to the dealer and paying probably twice as much quite literally twice as much for that so 
right here. Um, most of these air filters on here have a outer foam pre-filter and then the actual air filter underneath some kind of a canister paper type filter. Um, so this, this literally takes two seconds to pop off and get access to this. So there's just no reason that this is this dirty. Uh, so I'll, I'll tell Billy like, dude, you, you have to take care of this stuff or it's going to end up costing you more money and you're not going to make any money in the business. So this, you can literally just blow this off with your, uh, air blower. If you have, you know, your backpack blower, or handheld blower, if you have nothing else, if you have compressed air, that's even better. Uh, you, you really kind of almost need compressed air to blow these out effectively, but you can also just bang them on, on something hard and watch all the dust come out. Um, this right here is so bad. You can literally just pull it off. So there, there's a number of ways to do it, but it, you know, in between the, you know, it's time to replace the air filters. They need to be cleaned a lot. And that goes for trimmers, blowers, everything like the air, air filters are very important. You do not want junk getting into your engine. Um, so like I said, we got the oil, oil fill, oil filter. And then this one has a nice little tube that comes back here that allows you to drain your oil without getting it all over the place. So I love that. I've seen several mowers that have that built in and I think it's, you know, really, really smart. Just makes sense. Um, so yeah, so that was uh, the point of the video. Basically just wanted to get you, you know, somewhat familiar with these mowers if you're considering buying one or if you're new to the industry and didn't have anybody to teach you everything about these mowers like I did. Um, I'm just really grateful that I hooked up with a company that I hooked up with and they were willing to answer all my questions and stuff like that. But I, I asked the questions is, is the thing. So like I would literally just grill, uh, the crew leader I was out with all day, every day until he said, Hey man, <laughs> please no more questions today. Like, can we just talk about something else? <laughs> like, I guess dude, like I'm trying to get to know this industry, but uh, that that's how I did it man asking questions watching videos reading books and actually just getting to know my mower uh, tinkering with it taking some pieces off putting them back on even when I didn't need to um, I just I wanted to be prepared for when anything went wrong I had everything I needed I knew um, you know I had the replacement parts I had the right tools and I knew how to do it so th these are little things that I think separated my business from being a very profitable lawn care business to a lot of businesses that seem to be running on a treadmill and they're out there doing the work every day. They're doing good work, blah, blah, blah. And they're not really getting anywhere. I just feel like there's a lot of money being lost in maintenance and efficiency time to go get parts that you should just have on the truck tools that should be in the truck. Um, highly recommend if you think there's a chance that you could use something out in the field that day, you take it with you. Like it, it does no good sitting at the shelf on the shop or in your garage or anything like that. So that's the mower, the walk behind mower maintenance breakdown. I hope you enjoyed it. My name is Ryan with Lawn Crack. If you liked the video, please remember to like and subscribe and all that kind of stuff. And until the next video, keep making money. And just so you know, I want to. We now have the iGo Pro website, iGoProLawnSupply.com, and we have literally every piece of uh, you know maintenance, repair, tune-up type stuff you could need for a mower like this. Any brand, essentially. So if if you do need it, I'd highly recommend to check out the iGo Pro Lawn Supply.com website because my whole goal here is I formed relationship with dealers, and I'm trying to pass along my dealer savings to the end user, you guys who do not have the ability to purchase from my vendors. If you do not have a, a resale license and you're not set up as a dealer, then that they, they will not do business with you. So um, what I do is you know, I started off with Nove and now I have several other of these lined up and I talk to people like on a daily basis that want me to start selling their products and some I say no, some I say yes, uh, stuff like that. I gotta believe in what I sell but we sell you know, very quality, uh, most of it's made in the USA, replacement parts that you know, I'm just trying to get them to you cheaper. So that's just a little FYI.